course will cover the basics of content marketing along with an example to help you better understand various concepts explained in this course. So let's get started and let's begin. Let's see what are the topics or contents that are available in this course for you. Uh, we will be looking into what is content marketing, the definitions of it, why content marketing. Uh, we'll also be looking into what's the difference between uh, conventional advertising and content marketing. And we'll also look into how and why content marketing can be a brand advocate for you. Uh, there is also user behavior. We'll look into user behavior, uh, which will be derived out of content marketing and why it is important for content marketing. And uh, majorly, we will look into content marketing strategy. We have a whole set of strategy uh, derived uh, so that you can learn better and uh, it's you can also apply the same after you finish the course and in the end to finish it off we will look into content marketing tools there are various tools in content marketing so we'll also have a, a small basic touch up of all the tools that we know in the market so let's start off with the most important thing what is content marketing content marketing is a strategic approach which focuses on creating value reliable and uh, which is also consistent along with the content in line with the target segment expectations with an intent to finally drive a profitable customer action let's begin with the basic understanding so as far as the definition goes which we have already gone through content marketing in simple words can be put this way it is reaching your target audience through valuable content and eventually converting them into loyal customers, which is the main purpose of content marketing. Again, you might have this question, why content marketing? Why is it important? Now let's understand why content marketing came into existence in the first place. In today's age, the advertisement industry is growing rapidly and millions of dollars are going into creating online ads. So this is to influence a customer's decision to purchase a product or a service. But consumer behavior is changing continuously. As education and access to internet is increasing at a rapid rate all over the world, the end customer is becoming more aware of the importance of quality of the product or the service before making the final purchasing decision. If a customer is spending their hard earned money on a product or a service, that customer is also now who spends a lot of time researching about the product or a service you this you must have done before buying something and um, again you will also look into aspects like whether uh, the price comparisons or discounts etc once the customer is satisfied with the value that the product or the service would bring then that would make the customer do the final purchase or that is when a customer decides to go for the final purchase so as we see uh, to just sum it up here, the end customer is becoming more aware of the importance of quality of the product or the service and thus the final purchasing decision lies with the end user or the end customer. So that is where content marketing comes into place. Content marketing helps the customer give valuable information through different channels. Content marketing helps a customer know about the product or a service in a more detailed supported by data which is which in turn again helps the customer understand the product or the service in detail and uh, make an informed decision before they do a purchase let's come into what is advertising and what is content marketing there is always uh, a question uh, which arises uh, what are the main differences which differentiate or per se what are the main uh, uh say points which differentiate advertising versus content marketing because both are used for one purpose that is to propagate your product or a service and uh, the end customer uh, to influence the end customer to buy it at the end of the day right so let's take it one by one we can see that there are four main aspects uh when you look into the differentiation of uh you know advertising and content marketing one is instant showcase versus lead nurture talking to and talking with general versus specific targeting business driven versus community driven 
in other uh, other than methods there are a few key differences between traditional advertising and uh, content marketing which are uh, summarized here so let's focus on instant showcase versus lead nurture so in advertising you focus on instant showcase whereas in content marketing it is more about nurturing your lead that you generate traditional marketing narrates that consumers is all about business uh, a provide uh, which provides a product or a service right and uh, through imagery videos uh, an ad captures the essence of a product service or brand directly so it, it's for example if you have seen an ad on your television commercial or television commercial um, that is what uh, we are talking about here so it's an instant showcase whereas when you look into content marketing it is not as direct as traditional advertising instead of showcasing content uh, you know uh, as in the form of an ad or a showcase content marketing puts out value added content that the target customer finds interesting and it's very useful it's it not doesn't only you know serve the purpose of showcasing your product or service but it gives out more wherein which a consumer or a customer finds interesting which who finds the post or say uh, the content that you give out very useful or interesting right so uh, since we have covered this let's move on to the next part of differentiation of uh, advertising and content marketing so what is the second most important difference when we talk about advertising it's kind of talking right it's talking to a customer uh, it's a one way communication to the consumers or customers you simply showing customers what your product service is and what is it about and you expect them to make a sale based on that short showcase it's just a one way communication but whereas when you look into content marketing it's talking with what it means is with online content there is a broad spectrum of opportunities to engage with your target audience they can leave comments on your blog posts example if you are propagating your content marketing through blogs or uh, even on facebook posts or instagram we'll come into that later but uh, this is the whole idea of it when which an a consumer or a customer interacts with you on your webinar or a podcast for example uh, in case if you are propagating there or comment and like for example as i mentioned on social media uh especially say instagram or facebook or let it be anything right and content allows you to respond back now this is the most important aspect of it when we are looking into talking to it was a one way communication but talking with is a two way communication when we look into content marketing and um, which actually lets you get to know your potential customers and uh, you you allow them to trust you and your brand now the third point where we can differentiate uh, between advertising and content marketing is general was a specific targeting uh, for example if you have seen any commercial or tv ad you can see that it is not specified you you might see some ads which doesn't relate to you for example you are a working professional uh, if you see an ad of a toy or a or or an app for children uh yeah it doesn't apply to you uh, unless or until you have kids but the whole point what i'm trying to say is that it is it is a it is generalized way of showcasing traditional advertising shows ads to vast audience and is very generic in nature whereas when you compare that same thing to specific targeting content marketing is targeted content marketers spend time researching their audience and to find out exactly what type of content they usually engage with so there's a lot of research which goes on before uh, you know you can target your uh, consumers or customers now this can only happen with content marketing uh, where in which you can also look into recent trends types of content that the audience read and the exact places their target audience is present so as to approach them with the right content strategy so you get a advantage here in content marketing as to say where uh, you can specifically target the age groups for example you might find specific groups or pages on facebook wherein which you will find a certain demography of 
or users there, right? Or your potential customers, say you're selling something, your product or service, which caters to uh, an age group of 20 to 30 year olds. So you, you might find a specific place where in which you can target to your potential customer rather than just generalizing, uh, airing whatever your product service or a showcase in form of an ad, right? And the final most important point is business driven. Advertising is business driven, whereas content marketing is community driven. With advertising, the business runs itself, right? And uh, it, it itself runs the show to be uh, to say they decide where and when their ads are shared. So businesses decide the exact timing of the ads, what time the ad should come out. Say, for example, uh, there is a cricket tournament which is going on. There's a lot of eyes on, on the TV. The decision to showcase your ad goes in at that time where you have most number of people. But on the other hand, uh, when we talk about content marketing, it's community driven, right? The content is easily consumed and shared by the users, which makes content marketing a very, uh, very community driven, uh, uh, right? And it has an advantage. Consumers are much more likely to check out a brand through content shared to them via their peers. Being easily shareable, online content is a great peer-to-peer -peer marketing tactic. For example, if you look into how many times your relatives or your friends or family must have advised you or told you that, hey, I bought this product or service, which is really good. Why don't you try it out? And on the other hand, if you see an ad in the TV about the same product or service, which one would you choose and which one is more effective, right? So content marketing is about creating pieces of content that your target customer will find valuable and useful. So at the same time, it is about getting in front of the right audience and nurturing that relationship so that they develop a trust and become loyal to your brand and to you and your business, your product, your service in the longer run. So these definitions or these points or specific important points are the key differentiators between advertising and content marketing. Let's talk about content marketing uh, as a brand advocate, right? So we, we there are certain aspects uh, built into this part. So we will take it one by one. So uh, let's look into creating brand awareness, right? The most effective way to make your content marketing stand out and garnish attention is to make sure your brand aligns with your content efforts. This level of strategic content marketing helps build brand awareness and also it strengthens your company's brand recall amongst your target audience. And also with this, there is building brand awareness through content marketing. Uh, it is not as difficult as you might think it is. It just needs meticulous attention and planning. And uh, that is when you can make it happen. You have more audience retention in content marketing, which means that your target audience is here to stay and uh, they engage more with your content. Content with high audience retention, more time spent is more likely to be visible to higher customer base rather than a conventional ad marketing. You, there is also establishment of trust. Quality and trustable content can speak a lot for a brand when you look into what kind of content you need to propagate, right? Whether it's on your website, your blog, or social media assets uh, like Facebook or YouTube channel or Instagram handles or Twitter handles, LinkedIn pages, etc., etc. It sets you up as an authoritative voice and influencer in your own domain. And uh, keep in mind that the 80-20 rule for your content creation always, right? So 80% of your content should resonate with the user, their, their pain points and how, you know, you can give them a solution for the problem while the other 20% can talk about your product or a service. Now that is how you earn the trust and you make that connection or a bond with your end user or a customer where in which you are giving them a content which will be helpful for them and, and in the end, the 20% of whatever content you write, you show that, hey, you know what, see, I have a product and a service here and it's going to help you. So this will engage customers and strike the right chord with them and prove to them that, you know, what they want and, uh, it, and their needs are priority rather than selling the product.
So we are catering to their needs uh, rather than selling our products. Uh, we also look into how uh, engagement with the audience happens. So it, it's a two-way communication. Consumers today like to be engaged and have a connection with the brand. This way, your consumers would trust you since they know you and also there is someone listening to them. So they need some sort of, uh, uh, you know, trust and assurance that whatever they are looking for, there is someone who can cater to it and you can be that. And lately, social media has turned out to be a platform for engagement and companies respond personally to individual customers or consumers. And by doing so, these companies contribute called as word of mouth marketing. So, for example, say if you, you you might see that there might be some customers or consumers who reach out to the official handles of a product or a service company and the company replies back and make sure that, you know, they, they are comfortable and they solve the request. Now, now the user is very happy because he whatever the user has paid, uh, he or she is getting the service. And that is how he might propagate about a brand which takes care of the customer or a consumer to his peers right so in that way uh, it's a two way communication which will again at the end it will help the brand and the product or a service to grow peer to peer via word of mouth you uh, also you must also have an active presence on social media uh, say like blogs and also to monitor pages for comments questions or complaints and respond with a minimum turnaround time and uh, be responsive and start conversations and um, uh, you will also look into what negative or positive kind of conversations are there and you will be able to build a positive rapport or relationship with a customer so these are the important points that needs to be taken care of in when when one is looking into engaging cons consumers or customers on social media the fifth point is user generated content we need to encourage or one needs to encourage user generated content when you talk about a brand today everyone is using social media to discuss brands like uh, they like and uh, also report complaints directly to the social handles and this can be very important for companies looking to build trust there ha there must have been some instances say in your life where you have gone through personally or someone you must have heard of who has gone into social media handles so for example twitter and tweeted hey uh, the product that i bought is not working please help me out so that is what this says uh, in in one of the surveys 76% um, uh, of the users said that content shared by average people is more trustworthy than brand share in other studies 92% of the people said that they trust the recommendations of other people even once they don't know over branded content so use of generated content is a great opportunity for your business to show how real people are and enjoying your products and build some serious brand trust. So to make sure, uh, you know, you need to share endorsements on socials. Example, Starbucks is consistently doing this. If you if you look at it, you can also actively highlight this content on your testimonials page, uh, a blog or like a Zappos created uh, uh, you know you can also create a specific destination for this kind of content then we come into user reviews so one must encourage user reviews so you should encourage your customers or consumers to provide a review of your products or services online even a negative review can be used to testify your company's transparency and just demonstrate your uh, responsiveness and willingness to turn that negative customer experience in so into a positive experience so user reviews becomes very important when we are talking about content marketing brand responsibility is the final point that will be covering under this section so what is brand responsibility and its significance here so most of the consumers feel strongly about brands being responsible socially right for example a car manufacturer say is expected to make make sure that the pollution levels of a car is in place and when uh, selling it to the consumer uh, it's very important that uh, the company shows the auto manufacturer shows this so social causes touch everyone in today's life and that fact is a brand uh, which cares uh, for those who 
create a good brand image and that helps in resonating more with the brand so for example i am looking to buy a car and i have two choices uh, i pay the same amount and the the choice one the choice a is a car uh, with, with a higher exhaust uh, say co2 exhaust and uh, carbon dioxide exhaust and the car b is an electric car so which one would i choose so so people tend to have you know uh, you know connections with brands that are responsible so this concludes this section let's move on to the next one behavior this is a very important aspect uh, you need to understand when we talk about content marketing there is something called as tofu that is the top funnel top of the funnel it is called awareness right so let's discuss as you see before taking the final call to purchase a product or a service a user goes through a behavior funnel as you can see here and uh, as the you know as the features of a funnel the top of the funnel is big of course but at the end the bottom of the funnel the area of cross section is less so so what, what significance does it have here L let's look into it at the very top of your content marketing funnel you are looking to bring a much larger and wider audience of potential leads because you are working to attract relevant traffic without deliberately filtering or discouraging conversions so that there are two kinds of people or users or say potential customers who just come into a content uh, say who come into the top funnel so either they can be completely decided uh, with your product or service or they can be a 50-50 as well so so the most common form of top funnel content would be your blog articles from there call to action should lead to a top funnel prospects to conversion opportunities like ebooks that encourage leads to uh, exchange their contact information for helpful content inside your goal with the top funnel content should be to educate your audience on a specific question or uh, what they need or what the pain point is that they are facing uh, and you need to also address them but without selling the product so you first it's sort of luring in right the, uh, so when we talk about top of the funnel we talk about awareness you need to make your potential user base uh, or potential consumer or customer base uh, aware of what domain or genre you're in uh, coming back to uh, the topic that we are looking into here we will now move into understanding what is the middle of the funnel okay it's called mofu we can call it as mofu middle of the funnel it starts for mofu and uh, looking into this once a lead enters the top funnel right they'll progress into the middle of the funnel stage in this stage of the funnel your content should continue to educate but also start process the start the process of positioning your product or service as a solution uh, into the customer's pain points right uh, for example ebooks are a very good way to use them as a downloadable asset in exchange for leads like contact information can be collected uh, etc now what happens in case that you can also look into case studies white papers videos and quizzes will also work uh, just fine if you use tactically so initially you lure them with the content which is interesting and then slowly when they are in the middle of the funnel you can you know they are into consideration then you show the consumer or the potential consumer or customer uh, and collect the lead data by giving something extra and finally when they come to the bottom of the funnel uh, the final stage uh, is, is is of the lead cycle so the whole lead cycle this is the final stage and in this stage obviously the most important uh, part is that you need to understand that this is where the consumer or the customer will decide and uh, the this is the most important part of the funnel or the whole funnel and uh, you are going to pitch the product and the service at this part at this stage of your consumer journey or customer journey your user your users have developed some sort of some level of trust with you and your brand over the content they have consumed over here right and this is where a free assessment an evaluation or a trial works nicely to start the dialogue and begin uh, you know to fully qualify your most interested leads if you have a discount code to use for your product or service this is the best place to put it 
you can also give them free trials for example if you look into ed tech service uh, ed tech companies or startups or ed tech services that are available in the market uh, for example say i look into a user point of view you found something very interesting an article about say example data science and you went or, or for example say you found an interesting article on something else like photography and you went into a blog and you saw into the blog you saw that there's a good content and in the end the blog says that okay if you give me your valid you know your information where in which we can contact you through email or phone number then you will get a photographic guide now to get that guide you fill the form and say okay that's fine and that is when you uh, you know you get a link or you are communicated via message or an email where which says that hey uh, you did you like our content why don't you check out our other things our other offerings you don't have to pay for it you can just come in and have a free trial or you can also say you know you we are giving you an early bird discount so you will get a 50% discount if you just come and look at into our product or a service that we have so this this completes the whole cycle of the user as an ex example which which i explained right now so let's move into the next part content marketing strategy every content marketing uh, has a proper built strategy before you execute and move into tactical uh, solutions or tactical executions so let's see what are the important uh, points that needs to be covered and which comes under content marketing strategy first you need to create a goal then establish your kpis to track what goal you know what are the metrics that you track then you should know your audience you also need to assess current position of your brand or your product or a service uh, the best content channels identify them decide on content types what are the different types of content you need to use identify and allocate resources accordingly uh, look into the content calendar and see plan execute create content most important part that you are going to be using distribution of that content and finally measure your results so let's go into these things one by one very interesting you will definitely like uh, you know going through each of them in brief detail let's talk about creating goals so improving revenue as a result of content marketing a good starting point for your content marketing strategy plan is to set out content marketing goals objectives this makes it easy to focus and prioritize content creation so that your content calendar stays on track a content marketing mission statement takes into account your target audience the content you will use to reach them and your value addition right so typical goals include improving revenue as a result of content marketing getting more traffic to your site improving authority on your businesses so that you gain influence and authority seo metric which leads to more traffic reduced marketing cost as as your content becomes more effective the amount you spend on marketing which reduces and finally social media engagement affecting both traffic and engagement once you know your goals it's it's time to keep moving on to the next step the second step in content marketing strategy is establishing your kpis or kpi stands for key performance indicators so what are these key performance indicators the best way to achieve goals is to have a quantitative way to measure your success right you cannot say okay i am more successful today than yesterday but how what are you tracking you need numbers to track you need to you need something to measure you need a setup or a process where in which you can measure your performance every day so this is where kpis come into play this means that setting up a key performance indicator for your content marketing effort is very important the kpis or the key performance indicators as they say the kpis will help you know when you have achieved your goals by providing milestones you can check off now and then uh, they'll also include what you plan to achieve in terms of revenue sales traffic seo and uh, and different aspects of digital marketing like email marketing or social media metrics etc typically these will have specific numbers attached to them for example you might want to look into the revenue target for the quarter you might want to set some revenue targets that you will be achieving them 
after so much time uh, subscribers sign up uh, or leads for your lead magnets amounting to high quality leads so whatever content you're going to put out there what how many subscribers do you get do you want projected the acquisition of subscribers or signups how many signups are you expecting uh, you need to set up these numbers for example how many leads are you generating for your business uh, in the end which you can put into the bottom funnel and move them to the bottom funnel that is and increase in traffic on all pages across your website how much traffic is your is your page or your post garnering where you put your good content and uh, also what i what are the improvement metrics in the search ranking of some of your critical web pages now this is very important when we talk about blogs uh, in, come into play right we need to improve the search ranking by making sure that all the keywords are present in the blog and the content that you're making it means at the end of the day if i'm a user i just go and search something which is relevant to me i have as a company, I have to make sure that when the user searches it, they get proper answers and a proper result and say your result is on top. Um, and also, you, you can also set KPIs on mentions, shares and comments based on your social media uh, content marketing. The, it depends on what kind of social media you put uh, your content in and based on that, you can also look into mentions, shares, comments, likes, etc. So the next strategy of content marketing is knowing your audience. The four more important parameters where you can segregate your audience are age, gender, education, and their income. So basically, we'll be, know, we'll be talking about what creating buyer personas. So one needs to know that their target audience and their user behavior and their online presence in order to create the right content for your users or your target or target audience in order to do so one needs to collect demographic data the primary step is to collect demographics on your visitors email subscribers blog visitors website visitors social media followers etc now after this you can look into web analytics social media analytics email subscriber analytics that will give you all the desired data that you need and based on that you can you can identify one or many users based on these four parameters now how can you create buyer personas what are the steps let's look into it the basic way of doing this or the easiest way of doing this is getting customer feedback to learn even more about your target audience you are you should try collecting feedback from your current customers that will give you insights into how they feel about the content you are currently producing what is the most urgent needs uh, are of what they are looking forward to and the third one is how you can address their problems with your content getting the right customer feedback can help you in these three things understand your readers and subscribers expectations you can also decide on the best places to reach your customers we we'll look into step nine, which talks about creating content and where we can put content. So we we'll look into this in the later sections of this course. But again, this point will become very important. Then the third point will be to flesh out your buyer personas, which we will talk about next. So how it's going to help you. So if you know a buyer persona or you can identify or make a buyer persona or a user persona, that will tell you the kind of content your audience would connect to, how it will help them, and what will make them care about it. So when you have a demographic data and customer feedback, you can segregate your users into different buyer personas. Based on those personas, you could target specific content pieces tailored to their expectations. So this concludes knowing your audience, and we have covered all the points here. Assessing your current position when you are doing your content marketing is one of the uh, many content strategies that we are learning in this course so we have looked into the previous three steps already this is the fourth strategy so many businesses already have their content out there right so this will include content that's on your blog as well as your social media content you might have podcasts videos and so on the next stage in evaluation is to understand that if content is bringing in relevant traffic on your website to do that you will need to carry out 
a content audit or a gap analysis to assess your situation so that can happen by creating a collection of content pieces such as blog posts guest posts ebooks at one place etc you can also do assess by assessing the success by measuring the time spent on the page and traffic numbers when i when we say there it's the users right the and also identifying the gaps by analyzing competition and including the topics which are not yet covered and the final point will be identifying infographics like for example uh, say gifs videos or vectors which can which are so attractive for users and uh, if you see that you are not using that then you are assessing yourself that okay we should use that comparing to your peers a good content is basically a perspective right so content needs to be updated with the latest information and uh, this needs to be also written in a language that the customer understands so these points become very important or else you won't get the traffic and that won't give you views or likes or whatever parameter you are, you are looking into in the longer run so how do you do this we look into seo rankings it's time to assess the usefulness of the content right you will be looking into metrics uh you know to evaluate inbound and outbound links to the content what is the search engine ranking is for a primary and secondary keywords if the content is widely shared by your audience is it being shared is it not being shared so seo rankings uh, is one important aspect in assessing your position you will see how well your content is ranking uh, when we say primary and secondary keywords these are the keywords that say a user uses in a google search bar and when you say inbound and outbound links what are the links that is leading to your content page or 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 the platform or the post that you have put out and what is outbound links to the content so so this aspect of seo rankings where you consider to assess your current position becomes very important not only that you need to identify content gaps as well when you are assessing your current position like where you stand first is the secondary keywords right in the content that you may not be targeting at all there there are primary keywords for example you are you are posting something on video editing you might use keywords like adobe or photoshop etc but there might be secondary keywords like uh, layering filters um, or or you might have font or text or or or, or something of that sort where in which you know you are also showing that the video contents not contains not only these major uh, aspects of one who is looking for but also the secondary aspects uh, which you might have not put out in the secondary keyword so you need to make sure that all the aspects are put out and all the keywords the secondary keywords are put out questions and queries that your target audience is asking on different platforms that you may not be addressing so when you are creating a particular type of a content you need to see what is it actually matching the kind of questions or the problems the users have in their mind for which they are looking or seeking out solutions you need to you need to approach this in that angle so looking into questions and qu queries will also show you where you are and finally content that that starting to rank well but may not be answering queries and now this is this is a drawback again like you might have optimized your content for seo that all the keywords are properly put in which are available and which actually relate or maybe sometimes we overdo it but again is the is the content that you put out like for example a blog is it actually telling the user what what is what the user is looking for this will be very important usually this happens when uh say uh, uh user like google answer boxes so we need to look into ranking well but again we should also make sure that the content is answering the queries put up by the users so with all these points we can assess our current position in content marketing let's look at the fifth strategy point in content marketing best content channels this step involves a research on where your audience resides like apart from your content Right. this may be on your medium uh, on medium for example medium is a blogging site and it might be on quora or there might be different platforms where they might find more content related to your niche do a thorough research on these platforms on the kind of queries being put up and answered 
So you need to understand your, the mentality of your users and where they spend for the kind of content that you're looking for that you have, but you might not be putting into the platform they are looking into. It may be one of that content pieces that you have written answers uh, to those questions, right? In that case, you could provide a link to these sites to help your customer or potential customer or consumer land to a page with a higher quality content than which is already present. So uh, selecting the best content channels is very important. Uh, let's summarize what we learned. Do a research where your audience resides and um, uh, check out where they find more content related to your niche and do a thorough research on these platforms and uh, make a note of it. Keep a list of it where in which you can use these platforms to post your content. The sixth content strategy point is decide on content types or content buckets as we say. These are different content types. So this is done to segregate the content into different buckets, right? And uh, this is mostly the high end view of the content to, to get a higher end view or high level view of the content that you put on your blog site or your post or a medium post or a platform, social media platform, etc. Once you have categorized the content into buckets or types, you can evaluate the traffic that you will receive on your pages based on your category. So this will be uh, very helpful. For example, I'll, I'll explain with an example for a website like Amazon. It could be that, you know, the electronics category might be receiving more traffic than apparels. This also means that users are more inclined to purchasing electronic items on Amazon and content related to apparel needs to be looked at more strategically. So this gives us different buckets or types of content to decide. Blog posts are also an essential part of your content marketing mix which should be and uh, they could bring in more traffic since they have a scope to target a wide range of keywords which may be indirectly related to your business. Ideally your blog post should add value, should be actionable, it should be valuable, it should be shareable and may include a range of article types as well. So you need to segregate your content, the content that you put on your blog site have a high level view of it. And once you have categorized the content into buckets, you can evaluate the traffic you receive on your pages. Identifying and allocating resources. This is the seventh strategic point or one of the seven, uh, one of the strategies in content marketing. You need to understand uh, about the content, but again, there are people behind it who make or create content or work on content or monitor content, right? Now that you know that the type of content you are planning to create that we have learned in the previous section, we know that who it is for and who you are planning it to share with. And it's important to make sure that you have everything that you need to deliver on your content marketing strategy. That involves answering questions like uh, who will create the content, who will optimize your content, who will check on page SEO and uh, publishing the workflow as well. So for example, who is who will create your content? They are content creators who are creative. They look into content, the, the kind of uh, domains or genre that you have your business or your product or your service on, create the content. Uh, then you have your experts who will look into optimizing your content to make it uh, readable, to add graphics. Uh, the third person will, the third, say, a team member that you might have, we look into page SEO, technical keywords are all the keywords or what the user might search your content for. Is it all available on in the content? For example, I'm looking into, I'm explaining, trying to explain this in point of view of a blog. So does all the keywords have? So for example, a user might have a query, how to, uh, how to use regression? What is the formula for regression in using how to use regression formula, for example, sorry. So in this case, uh, the user might be looking for something exactly like a formula which explains and with an example. So you might have created the content which is already there. But again, do all these keywords, for example, regression, formula, uh, solution, do or does all these words uh, present are all these words present in your content yes or no so the an SEO expert is very important when you are working on content for example like blogging and finally publishing workflow someone to look into the workflow uh, when you publish your content
now we come to the next part since we have done all the steps properly strategies we have followed in the content marketing we come into the into the part where we create content calendars now why is this important as part of your content strategy you will need to know exactly when you want to publish your content right and in each of these platforms you need to uh, that you will be using you need to know when you will be putting up the content for example say you can use google sheets to put in the tiles and dates of publishing and share it with all the stakeholders all the content tiles could be color highlighted to decide priority once published each of these uh, rows also needs to be checked in by the seo team um, and also to check in for all page activities when you define strategically and you put timelines on what kind of content is going where and when you need to organize your content marketing uh, what are the posts or what are the types of content which are going where but you need a calendar and a timeline so you can basically start off by using google sheets you can use simple color coding to make it effective and organized welcome to this next section where in which we will discuss how to create content now since we have discussed everything apart from creating content and how to strategize how to put in your calendar what kind of research you need to do we come to it at the end creating content itself so before you create content a lot of research needs to be done to evaluate the kind of keywords uh, or queries your target audience is searching for once that is done the next step is to segregate your content and index it properly uh, for example number of keywords with a lower search volume could be clubbed into one blog uh, which could be targeting a common theme for all the keywords once the research is done you will have an idea of what type of blog post to create now decide the format of that content should it be in the form of a list format or how to format once you have these questions answered it would be easier for you to frame the content one of the most important things or uh, points that you need to look out for is first of all do the research research do your research in keywords ranking on google club the lower lower ranking keywords with a higher common ranking keyword theme or uh, which you will put in your blog decide your word count too short a blog not useful not informative but too long a blog may be boring you will have to find the ideal number of words uh, in which you can capture the user and get the user interested or a potential who can be a potential customer or a consumer strategize now by adding uh, videos infographics you can add uh, you know related videos uh, from youtube links you can embed them you can also use vectors you can use mind maps it's better to make it more attractive so that you know you drag the attention of the user and potential customer or consumer and uh, finally you do the most important thing of all that is publish your content now let's move on to the distribution so now you have done the most important thing in content marketing that is publishing the content now once you have published your content there it's no point that the content sits in your blog and no one looks at it so you need to uh, work on extremely hard on distributing your content uh, content and yeah there are smart ways to do it but again the effort remains the same uh, you you might look into different ways of distributing uh, your content so that is why in the next key part of your content strategy is distribution of your content it is also called as dissemination right dissemination meaning you spread out or share your content so dissemination of the generated content is very necessary else google won't be able to evaluate uh if some piece of content is ranking well or is being shared in a specific community right uh so make sure that dissemination is very important and you put a, put a bit of effort in your content strategy in this point and uh, there are various mediums wherein which you can disseminate your content for example email marketing you can shoot out uh, email marketing using tools like mailchimp we will discuss what is mailchimp later in the end uh you can also use social media sharing you can share it on different groups on facebook or pages uh you can give it out to uh, influencers uh, pay them also if you are interested in paying and disseminating your content you can look into other social sort of how you would say half social media uh platform something like te- uh, whatsapp or maybe telegram right Uh, individual websites as well like affiliate blog sites or partner blog sites you can uh, do backlinking where you can link your or add your link relevant links to their blogs 
uh, you can do vice versa image websites as well uh, you can add uh, the link there and uh, uh, most importantly many of uh, the content marketing um, the professionals use this YouTube comments and description right now this is uh, YouTube has a lot of content lot of videos uh, so list down all the videos that is relevant to your content and uh, go to those uh, YouTube uh, video sites or pages and start commenting uh, you can also collaborate with the youtubers to put it uh, in the description of all the videos you can maybe monetary benefits involved or not you know you can also put it out into community forums where a lot of people there will be a lot of discussions finally push notifications in case uh, you have an app or a system where in which you can communicate to your uh, user base or leads uh, most importantly after you do everything now your work is done now is to just sit relax and measure your results you need to relax but at the same time you need to measure your results because results determine what your work is and how your work fared uh, so basic things in looking into say result or measuring is uh, you you will determine what's the success of your content marketing strategy you will see whether all the tactics and strategies you deployed were uh, very successful or did it cut make the cut this this step actually helps you evaluate all the other previous steps and measure success because success is what we are working for and whatever kpis were finalized that is the key performance indicators you can go back measure all the measurement metrics and see okay if so, there are some changes i need to make and that's the result why i'm getting this result and you can or you can always go back it's good to have iterations keep changing small things here and there to optimize whatever your strategies and then later dependent tactics are in content marketing see if you have achieved what you have aimed at the beginning of your exercise when you started your content marketing to do this you can check out google analytics that's a very informative and important tool that content marketing strategists use you can track all the traffic coming onto your blog page and going out as well uh, you can also measure social sharing from the dissemination you have you must have done on social media platforms measure the number of signups or leads gained uh, this uh, this is very important in the top or mid funnel um, where in which you can uh, where in which you would have uh, you know signed up or uh, generated leads or leads might have come to your system where which they must have subscribed given their email id etc etc so you need you can measure if it's very successful you'll get a lot this number of signups or leads gain will be high and again coming back to the drip effect all the middle uh, you know funnel users go to the bottom funnel and uh, that is where you can showcase your product or service and uh, you can generate revenue to your users or potential customers or consumers there you go we come to the end of this course so uh, uh, we hope that uh, you have learned all the important aspects and points right from the starting and uh, in the end uh, it's important to understand what are different tools available in the market there is wordpress uh, which uses php programming or coding uh, so you can design your own website you can you can take your own domain name uh, you can also integrate as mysql maria db for databases it has a plugin architecture and a template system referred to within wordpress as something called as themes most of the bloggers use wordpress um, so so check it out Uh, there's also google analytics as we express as, as we told as we discussed earlier a very important tool you can track everything with google analytics you can also track paid performance marketing you can also look into the traffic the keywords whatever you have used even the utm parameters you must have used in campaigns definitely useful sem rush and ahrs are tools both do the same thing but uh, they have different uh, a small uh, differences but again at the end of the day you will be using these tools these are paid tools by the way they give you almost 80 90% accuracy so what are, what what accuracy does it give you it gives you sites if you want to look into traffic going into some other third party site you can get to know what are the organic tra- what is the organic traffic going there what is the inorganic traffic what are the backlinks what is the uh, keyword strength and what are the important uh, sub uh, you know site pages of that particular website you can also do keyword search which gives you proper uh, 
a number of uh, keyword strength as well on Google. Uh, so very important tool when you when it comes to keywords. Moz is another tool uh, which uh, builds tools that make SEO, uh, inbound marketing, link building, and content marketing easy. It makes everything easy. Go check it out. You can have a Google, Google about Moz. You'll understand. Um, and we come to Mailchimp, uh, the go-to uh, most for most of the intermediate or beginner uh, content marketing uh, um, prospects, or say young professionals, or someone like you who's learning this course. Check out Mailchimp. They give you 1,000 uh, contacts free, and at the same time, I think they will give you also 5,000 bulk emails uh, marketing mails free so you can use their platform to store uh, up to thousand email ids and uh, shoot a mail or message at once uh, they also have paid plans but yeah mailchimp is the go-to tool to be used uh, there's also called something called a send grid uh, which is a slight different i would say both uh, do the same thing but uh, usually people prefer mailchimp there's also hot suite uh, hot suite is a social media management platform so it was created by Ryan Holmes in 2008. Uh, Google about it, you'll know more about it. And finally, Bazumo, where in which you can evaluate uh, social media. You can basically discover content ideas, uncover platform insights, and uh, you can do a run search quickly to do all this in Bazumo. So this is also another important tool. There are other important tools, but as of now, knowing these tools would be definitely important and uh, will make the cut. We hope that you like this course and uh, hope we have covered everything right from the start uh, from what is the definition of content marketing, what's the difference, what are important other pointers uh, related to content marketing. We have covered all the basics to set you up for something big. We hope you like the course and we wish you all the best and hope to see you soon doing some sort of content marketing. Cheers.